Today, I'm continuing work on the makerspace inside my home, and this video is going to be all about the counter. How to take rough sawn pieces of lumber and turn them through a lot of work into a smooth, durable, beautiful counter for the space. So the first step is obviously to get the wood. I drove out to my friend Kim's place, he runs a mill out in the country here in Oregon, and he provided me with a lot of rough sawn big pieces of maple. By the way, isn't his place awesome? I'll leave a link in the description to his Instagram if you want to check him out. Getting large rough sawn pieces like this is obviously a lot cheaper than getting milled up lumber that is ready to be glued up. But you do have to realize that when you start from scratch like this, there's a lot more work involved and a lot more waste. So for example, here there's a knot, kind of goes like, like this. Um, I find that it's almost easier to just ch chop that whole part off and then start here. So here you can see part of the stack. A lot of wood has gone into this project. First of all, I kind of evaluate each piece, see how twisted it is, and my goal is to make those pieces smaller. Right now they're really heavy and big, so I need to make them more manageable so I can physically move them around easier and use them on my rather small tools like my DIY jointer and planer. I also straight sides to be able to cut them on the table saw. So first up, the band saw. Now the wood all differs, so some pieces are straighter than others, and a few pieces I could cut directly on the bandsaw, others I brought into the shop first to get it straighter by using hand tools. Of course, if you had some heavy duty equipment like big jointers and planers, then you could skip this step and work these pieces on those right away, but since I don't, I have done a lot of work by hand with chisels and planes. I found that you can really do a lot with hand tools, and if a piece is really bowed, for example, then a big chisel enables you to make that flatter faster than many other tools. Then once I had pretty straight pieces, I used my planer and ran them through there a number of times. This big leaf maple is really beautiful. It has a lot of interesting grains and all those twists and turns makes it really interesting in terms of the, the look of it, but it also makes it very challenging to work with. So when you cut these pieces up, when you cut a piece like this up, then it, sometimes the wood just kind of twists as it, as it gets cut up because there's so much tension in it already. So then you have to work with that and plane that and, and get it straight once you cut it up. Okay, so once my pieces were pretty straight, it was time for the table saw. My goal is not to use as large pieces as possible for the counter, instead I'm trying to cut them down into smaller, more stable pieces, which I can glue together in sections. When the pieces were smaller, I brought them into the shop again and looked them over. It's funny how some pieces get a little more bowed and twisted once they're cut. So if there are any knots, I mark out where to cut those out, and if they're bowed a little, then I plane them to get them straight again. So now you can see the pieces are shorter and hopefully straight, although not all of them are. So I'm trying to figure out which pieces are straight enough to glue together in sections, so it's like a giant puzzle to see what's going to work. Here are some longer pieces that I'm seeing again. Are they straight? Is there a knot? Does that part need to be removed? And so forth over and over again. I want to minimize as much waste as possible. Once I had smaller, straighter pieces, I ran each one over my DIY jointer a couple of times.
Now I'm at the point where I can actually start gluing up. And I'm doing many different glue ups here. The idea is to first glue up several pieces together into smaller sections and then glue those smaller sections together into bigger sections. Each section needs to be planed to make sure it's straight and here I'm using hand tools again and just doing one section after another. Now I want to talk about the design of the counter for a minute. The whole length here is about 8 feet and I want a pretty thick counter. And I realized that making a counter that long was going to be, yeah, super heavy and just really cumbersome to move around and I'm not even sure whether or not I could get it in my house. So instead I decided to split the counter in two. The first section will be primarily over the thin drawer cabinet and the boards will go vertical. The second section will be larger and the boards will be horizontal. That way there will be a visual difference between the two and I think that will look nice. To get ready for the first glue up, I'm trimming the sections here so each row will be of the same width. Okay, so now I have these three sections and I'm gonna glue them together to create one side of the counter. I just realized that uh, I only have two clamps that are long enough for this whole stretch. They exert a lot of pressure, so I think that's going to be uh, just fine. I'm gonna glue this all up. So just putting on a lot of glue and clamping it all up. Then Matt jumped in here and did some trimming of this piece to get the sides straight. He also planed and sanded it to get it smooth. So I'm just testing out the counter here for the first time and it's looking really good. So this is going to be like the first part of the counter and then there's going to be a second part of the counter that's going from here. Now I'm working on the second counter and I'm trimming these sections to get each line of the glue up to be of the same width. So now the glue up here is complete for the other half of the counter and I'm just using the scrub plane here which is really aggressive and takes off a lot. So once I've used this at the most extreme part of difference here, then I'm going to move on to the smoothing plane and get these grooves off and get it nice and smooth before sanding. Okay, so time for a little power planing outside to get it straighter. And then I trim the sides. At this point, I wanted to make sure I cut this at a good length, so the two counters will line correctly up inside. And that's a little finicky to get right. There was just a lot, a lot of sanding. Um, okay, so I just put on the doors and this unit in place and now I want to put on the supporting pieces in between so that I can get ready for the counter. Next up I'm adding some shims and screwing the cabinet into the studs in the walls. I'm adding shims so the cabinets won't get sucked into the wall and out of level when secured. I'm also adding a 2x4 in the back for additional support. So with a little lifting help, this is in place now, the counter. And so the thing is, I need to shim it in place. Um, this part right here is pretty perfect, but over here it's down just a little bit. So I'm going to go underneath and shim this in place and hopefully get these nice and even. Um, that's also why I put the 2x4 in the back here, so when I shim it and there's more pressure, uh, there's more support for that back piece.
And this is a piece of sapili that I'm going to cap the counter with. Just drilling some half inch holes so it can be capped with dowels later. It is amazing how well this piece tied those two counters together. Also mix some glue with sawdust and fill in any small gaps where the two counters met. I decided to round the end of the cap piece and just using a jigsaw for that. It's just to make the edge a little smoother and make the whole counter feel a little less edgy. I also used a block plane on the edge to round it and make it smoother. Now to cap those holes in the sepili, I've got a half inch oak dowel here that I'm just cutting to pieces. And finally, sanding. Since I'm doing this inside my home now, I'm very concerned about dust. So I've got this sander attached to the shop vac, and this sander is made specifically to catch dust underneath as it sands, and it worked out really well. Okay, and then securing the counter from the underneath with some screws. So I was originally thinking about just doing wax polish on this whole counter, but then I was thinking I really want to seal the wood in a little bit first, so I'm putting on a coat of water-based polyurethane, and then I'll do wax polish over on top of that once it's dried. I was out of wax polish, so I opened up a new tin of the tang oil polish and put it all over the counter with some steel wool. And this is the stuff that I make and sell on my website if you're interested. And it just makes the surface super nice and smooth. Okay, so the counter is finally in here now. And after all that work, all that milling, it is kind of amazing to have it in here. And I feel a little bit like it's Christmas morning or something, finally having it in here. And yeah, I am very happy that I went with the two counters um, because, <laughs> uh, you know, just thinking about what a nightmare it would have been to have this huge counter and try to maneuver it in here and get it to fit just right. Uh, this worked out really well and I think it really added, like visually, it looks really cool. So I'm really happy I went that way. And then of course adding this cap piece here to really tie the two together, which worked out really well. And then the sepili I think adds a nice contrast and I'm planning on adding some sepili details as well in the next video. So uh, that's kind of cool. This big leaf maple uh, was really challenging to work with, but now you can really see the benefits of that because this wood is just so interesting. I mean, there's so much going on in these different pieces. Some of these have like knots and the variations are so great. And then some of them are a little bit spalted, so they have these different kind of colors. And some are just straight and some are much darker. So it just looks so cool. Um, and you just can't get this if you were to buy this. So it is really cool to do this from that point of view. So this is the fourth video in the Makerspace series. Uh, don't forget to check out the previous three ones if you missed them, like building all this other stuff. And then there's going to be one more where, I, where I'll go over, you know, adding some more like shelving and other details and just finishing everything up and also kind of adding some stuff <laughs> to the space. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this project, uh, this video in the comments below. I'd love to hear about that. And uh, yeah, otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. It's been quite the journey. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.